Hello and welcome to a new massive cabot time. We've got about 120, 130 watches. And yeah, it's a big, big listing. We've got six parts of Omega, then Rolex, three parts of Cartier, Jaeger Le Coultre, Universal Genève, and then Longin. Um, as for other brands, didn't have enough space to put them in this listing, so we'll be for another time. Anyway, uh, let's start with Omega. We've got three of the same model. These are the oval ones. Um, the first two in nice condition. The second one, uh, dial has some patina. Really sharp Omega de Viltono. Another uh, Omega de Viltono. This one, uh, dial has some marks. This one, beautiful condition with Roman numerals. Really sharp white brush dial uh, de Vil. Does have some light marks. A big TV case de Vil automatic. A rose gold plated Omega from 1960, um, steel also 1960, and then a constellation quartz, a uh, really cheap one. Next up, we have a bunch of square ones and some others. First up, two crisp Deville squares, actually three crisp Deville squares. Um, these are these both are the same model. This one is slightly different. Um, but yeah, all are very similar design. Then this automatic with patinated dial. This beautiful Genève with uh, white brush dial. This one, this beautiful with um, blue tapestry stripe dial, whatever you call it. Omega Medicus, uh, a bumper automatic sub seconds, uh, sub seconds manual wind, sub seconds manual wind as well. And then lastly, this. Um, Boy size um, Seamaster automatic from 1958. Next up, we've got a lot of Genève. Um, we have a bunch of uh, crisp white sunburst styles, as you can see. Also, this beautiful piece with a white brush dial. More white sunburst. This is uh, gray sunburst, really stunning as well. And then blue or purple sunburst originally this was blue but it turned more into a um, purplish hue just really really stunning piece next to it another beautiful white sunburst very sharp on a crocodile strap so you see a lot of black lizard leather but um, for any of these watches a strap can be changed uh, just let me know then we've got uh, this Omega Genève with a white brush dial this is the Ville white brush dial and another De Ville with white brush dial. What I like about these is the case back. It's uh, the De Ville logo. I think it's something quite uh, special and peculiar as well. Anyway, on to the next row. We've got some bigger sizes. First up, we've got uh, some 36.3 millimeter Genèves. This one is fully original with original strap, buckle and box. The strap does have some wear to it, but I can include a new strap as well if you'd like. This one super super sharp with stunning grey brush dial. This one also very sharp and has a really cool engraving on the back. There you go. Um, I explain it fully in the details of the listing. This one also quite nice patinated uh, champagne brush dial. This one really crisp um, grey brush dial silver brush dial and then some crisp white sunburst dials um, this one is a matte black dial has some light patina but also nice condition overall um, one thing to note which is difficult to see in the pictures the crystal has some um, here like a weird weird effect in it i believe it has been polished with a machine in the past and it got a bit hot here you've got like a, a bit of a there at the bottom as well. I think it got a bit too hot when polishing with machine in the past and that causes this. Then this beautiful snowy white sparkle Seamaster Cosmic and then this beautiful crisp Deville white sunburst with a sea case. On to the next ones we have two Seamaster Deville's one which actually says it on the dial with a beautiful white sunburst crosshair dial light patina then this amazing stunner, this is a custom dial by Omega, um, was like a reward for um, 25 years of service. Then we've got a Seamaster Genève stunning, uh, a Seamaster Automatic, 
then this rare beauty this one is from 1915 if i'm not mistaken or 1918 uh, full details will be in the listing of course it's a uh, an officer's watch called omega trench watch was used in the first world war um, well was popularized in the first world war this one in superb all original condition with all original loom and the porcelain dial also has no cracks whatsoever also bigger size this one is 35 millimeter very hard to find these in a condition this is amazing nowadays then um, nice 1947 48 um, radium dial uh, super crisp case then this very rare khaki gray dial 37 something millimeter solid gold watch and then this big beauty this one is 38 millimeter and has beautiful just looks amazing uh, i really love the the indices on this one because they are um, in the shape of a sun um, it's sort of a sunburst dial but uh, different this one has some light pattern but looks amazing and just such a big boy then another World War One watch. This one was issued to the British military in World War One. Um, it does have um, a crack here and here in the dial, as you can see, but overall still really, really nice condition. Um, also, the case back is missing. Um, well, it does have one um, case back, but these normally have two case backs. As you see, there's the outside one is missing. Uh, that's why I'm selling it cheap. Next up, we have this incredible Omega Constellation. This one is a Lapis Lazuli type dial. Uh, it looks a lot like Lapis Lazuli, but I believe it's enamel dial, uh, not the actual Lapis stone. It's fully original with original strap and buckle. Very rare reference, this one. And just incredible, just looks so beautiful. Then we have three Gerald Genta designed C cases. So if you're a fan of Patek Nautilus, this is a uh, design by the same guy, just a bit cheaper. Uh, we've got silver brushed, gray sunburst, white sunburst, white sunburst. These are the same model, one without bracelet, this with the original bricks bracelet. Then we have the Omega Manhattan uh, next to it, the Omega Seamaster pre bond, and then the bond one. This one is the Pierce Brosnan one, uh, worn in three movies. This one, well not this actual watch, but the model. And then this one is um, a slight uh, update or whatever of it, with the incredible electric blue dial and the huge, huge uh, loom. This one just pops so incredibly. This one also a very strong loom because it's Super Luminova from 2006. And lastly for Omega, we have this amazing beauty. This is a, an 18 karat Setna Gold, um, so rose gold, but Omega's special formulation. Omega Aquaterra, this one is the coaxial, of course, from 2015. This one is a full set with box and papers. Very, very nice, all original condition with original strap and buckle. And just such a beautiful piece with the great teak dial or tech I don't know how you have to pronounce it but the watch is stunning that's all that matters on to the next ones we have Rolex here this one is um, a Canada market from 1942 uh, the solar aqua then next to it we have two oyster perpetual 31 millimeter this one is uh, um, only like 10 15 years old and then this one is from 2002 2004 this one comes with box and papers next week we've got a 6694 oyster date a 14010 um, air king and then a 15200 um, really really crisp condition these pieces both with the same model dial next week we have um, a 1601 super crisp condition with uh, champagne sunburst dial a 16013 also very sharp condition with champagne sunburst a champagne linen dial really sharp also 16013 then this 18038 uh, day date from 1977 with incredible blue sunburst dial and lastly for rolex at least we've got this incredible uh, ladies they just in 18 karat solid gold with fully factory original diamonds then 
moving on, we have Cartier. Let me just change position again because that was a bit awkward there. Um, first up, we have this incredible Cartier Bag Noir. Um, this one is solid rose gold, really, really beautiful condition. It's very difficult to capture its beauty on camera, but this one is v just incredible. Um, this is uh, ladies quartz with original strap and buckle the buckle also solid gold of course next to it we have uh, some smaller pieces this one is a colisee with a gold clamshell dial next to it we have this beautiful piece um, the blue dial and the diamonds are custom settings so uh, i believe in the 1990s and early 2000s in hong kong it was very fashionable to get the uh, the um, simple Cartier Vendôme models and uh, well VLC must these are actually called but most people refer to it as Vendôme uh, it was very popular to um, just put like diamonds and whatever in them and yeah this one got the treatment but this one just looks incredible the dial has some cracks but looks like a starry night sky just the way it pops I love it um, next to it we've got uh, a red dial Vendôme um, VLC must, well it's all VLC must here this one black spider dial super pretty condition dial has some spider pattern let me just wipe off the crystal first there we go it's a bit better as you see dial has strong spider pattern but um, it looks a lot uh, more harsh in the video now because of the direct sunlight but uh, in reality it looks a bit softer this one is uh, with box and papers and deploying buckle then we've got this one um, let me just scroll over it a bit quicker um, well these are ladies model this is the unisex model this is 30 millimeters both are the same model dial um, which I really love this model and so much for scrolling over it quickly but yeah this one just is incredible anyway um, moving on we have the 35 millimeter 21 must XL um, it's called XL because it's 35 millimeters which for that time was really big for Cartier um, men's watches and then we've got two Cougars these are both full set, super crisp condition. This is a his and hers, or hers and his full set, and just incredible pieces. Moving on, we have Cartier Tank. Um, first up, we've got uh, the classic dial, and then next to it, we've got two Trinity dials. One, uh, the left one is a full set with box and papers. The right one is watch only. Um, this one also super sharp condition. Um, the thing with these Trinity dials is they're really really difficult to photograph and video but they look incredible in the flesh because well the polished gold is like a mirror so it's very difficult to actually capture um, well the beauty of the dial on video um, except if you're in open air pretty much anyway next week we've got a flat red dial and then a blue dial this is not lapis lazuli just blue lacquer next week we've got a burgundy dial a very rare tiger eye dial um, beautiful brown spider dial and then we've got another trinity dial um, anytime you've got the three gold colors so yellow rose and white gold together it's called trinity dial then we have um, whatever dial it's called and then it's a bit hiding away but this beautiful piece this one is uh, not gold plated as all the others this one is rhodium plated so, so well most people refer to it as white gold uh, because white gold also gets rhodium plated this one is full set with box and papers and then next week we've got this incredible piece this one also full set with box and papers from 1980 and just a very very rare box um, the box alone is something you never find and just incredible if you ask me it's, um, just presents so nicely and the watch itself is also in superb condition there we go 
Anyway, moving on, we have some Cartier Santos. First up, we've got Santos Vendome. Um, this one, ladies model, beautiful grey brush dial, very, very stunning piece. Uh, the bracelet has been repaired in the past on the back. Um, this model tends to get loose. Um, yeah, has been um, tightened a bit in the past. But other than that, super sharp. Um, next up, we've got uh, three Santos Carré automatic, two women's ones. This one is a 1170902. This one is a 0902. So, this is the original model with or, um, from 1978 with the first version bracelet. Uh, let me just give you some Cartier history, and then this is this the follow up this is still the exact same model but just slightly refreshed with um, the version 2 bracelet so you can see this one bracelet has like the um, the elbow joints or shoulder joint whatever you call it and then this one has the updated design and um, yeah this one super crisp condition full set with box and papers this one is watch only good condition then we have this um, men's Santos carry automatic, also super crisp, very nice condition with uh, box and booklets, no um, certificate. But also this one from 1987, uh, 1987 with uh, just conditions so, so sharp. Uh, you still see some red paint in the lettering on the case bag, which is an indication that it wasn't worn much in the past and that's also why the bracelet is so sharp this one most of these have stretched but this one is very very sharp um, like stretch test is incredible as opposed to this one which is smaller so should have less hang but already has a, a bit more because it was worn uh, considerably, considerably more uh, next to that we have the Santos Ronde, this one nice condition, big size, um, well for Cartier, this is automatic by the way, um, I think this is a very underrated model, not many people, uh, it's not on many people's radar yet, but I uh, feel like it will come up in the next few years. Next week we've got a Breitling Cadet Chronograph, um, and then um, a Pure Dirty Dozen, this is British Military World War II issued. Then uh, Jill Auricos Type 20, um, a Breitling 765 AVI, and lastly we've got this Panerai. Uh, this one is a 1998 A series um, in black PVD, uh, PAM 009. They're uh, quite rare and collectible because of the tritium dial, which was only in production for about a year and a half uh, for these uh, A and B series and next up we've got Jaeger Le Coultre and Universal Genève and also this Wittnauer with incredible swirl dial um, this well most people call it swirl or swirly uh, the French term is moiré which just means swirl as well um, just really stunning piece this one I really like the effect from a moiré dial Next week we've got a uh, Jaeger Le Coultre Powermatic, well a Le Coultre, this is American market, another Le Coultre with beautiful tuxedo dial, and then this Memovox with tuxedo dial. And then we have a special piece, this is a Burus Super Slender, this one is a Burus Micro Rotor Automatic, this one superb condition, all original, with original buckle as well, very very rare to find. Um, yeah, camera doesn't want to zoom in properly, but yeah, it does have some uh, marks on the back, but other than that, super crisp. The Burus Super Slender, I, I really like the history behind it, because they were only in production for a short period of time, because they got sued by Universal Genève with their micro rotor, because uh, Universal thought the Burus design looked too much like theirs and Bure lost and they had to pay uh, royalties for every micro rotor automatic they sold um, to Universal Genève and so they stopped uh, producing them quite quickly this one is the Universal Genève White Shadow it's called White Shadow because it's so thin this one is also micro rotor automatic which um, well just remarkable how thin it was 
and yeah it has a very big micro rotor like it's one quarter of this and yeah nice size this one next week we've got two manual wine tanks this one both the same design just a bit bigger um, this one also the same design this one white sunburst this one champagne brushed then we've got um, a Calatrava center seconds and then this rare beauty this one is a ancient Chinese bone script dial I've been told and this one just really really stunning um, like copper sunburst whatever you call this color just incredible I love this one and lastly for this listing at least we've got Longin with one Zenit um, yeah this one just simple Zenit from 1950s beautiful piece uh, has some patina it's a smaller size but still doable let's compare with a tank there we go it's uh, yeah similar to a tank but uh, I think the the vertical press is a bit smaller than a tank then we've got the Longin tank, uh, Longin automatic tonneau, Longin quartz, this one with original strap and buckle strap is a bit ugly so I can replace it uh, before shipping if you'd like then uh, beautiful manual wine Longin um, another manual wine with uh, white sunburst oil this one 1950 French market this one uh, US market from 1942 I believe um, this one I'm not sure if it's the original case or if it has been recased at some point um, I would expect it to be in a different case but uh, yeah it's a bit uh, unclear this case was often seen on um, Bue ships on the the navy issued watches from world war ii then we've got an 18 karat solid gold longin uh, french market this one the bezel has been replaced other than that uh, still nice condition well dial obviously has a uh, quite uh, a lot of patina and marks but uh, yeah still beautiful solid gold piece for a soft price then we've got this white gold fill longin really stunning bracelet watch with uh, original buckle of course well it's integrated and very comfortable to wear because you can size it whatever you want on the fly and lastly we've got this Longin conquest automatic also really nice original condition and uh, yeah you can see the case well the the movement i mean uh, beautiful see through case back anyway that's it for this listing hope you enjoy it you'll find um, all info in the red listing which i will link below and yeah um, if you don't have read it you can also just take a picture of what you see message it to me on instagram at cabwatch or at cabwatch.idn and i will uh, get back to you with uh, more pics info or pricing anyway hope you enjoy bye bye